Hello and welcome everyone to today's deck preview. Today we're going to be taking a look at Oracle Think Tank and none other than OTT. So this one took a little bit longer because I've been busy with defending my thesis in university and whatnot. But today we're going to be taking a look at Oracle at long last. We're only going to have Kagero left from VBT01 before we wait for VEB01. It's already shown some spicy stuff. But today we're going to be going over this. This list might seem a little bit controversial to some people, but it's not so much controversial, but rather following what pro players in Japan have been playing, namely that of Ryo Gyoza, and we're going to go over that big difference very soon. So zooming across to the actual deck, we start off with the starter, which is Lozenge Magus. The same skill as always, but the art is very nice. And then uh, Oracle Think Tank is a Protect Clan, so we do run those Protect Markers. Um, normally I'd say 4 is enough, because actually every time you use a Protect, um, after you use it, it goes back to the pile anyway, so you don't actually need more that many. Um, but you're probably going to ride 2 or 3 times per game, so I think having 4 is a good safety net. Anyway, but going over the cards, first we have CEO Amaterasu. We're going to go over the grade 3s first. So her skill is a Vanguard Circle Act once per turn. Kenomast 1, when you do, you draw 1, and look at the top card of your deck and leave it at the top or the bottom. So a very similar skill to what CEO Amaterasu used to be back in the day. She does also have Protect. All the grade 3s in the deck actually do have Protect. And then her second skill is both on Vanguard and Rearguard Circles. During your turn, when you look at your deck, this unit gets plus 5k. And the way that this works is that you can spam it with, you know, Globe Magus to get infinite power. It's basically per the instance of each skill, you get a plus 5k. So if you use Amaterasu to look at your deck, she gets plus 5k. If you use some other skill to look at your deck, she gets another plus 5k, etc, etc, etc. So she's really good as a 4 of. She's usually your first right target because that first skill lets you draw a card immediately and also leave the top uh, card on the top or bottom but also build up a bit of power so you can push a little bit. But she's especially good on Rearguard Circle as well because she's a really good beater and this deck is sort of built around building up Amaterasu to become this slightly bigger beater that can hit 22 or so every turn. Moving along, we do have basically the boss grade 3. I think you can run this at 3. Amaterasu I think is a 4 of no matter what. This can be run as a 3 because you usually want to write it second but if you write it first it's not that bad either. When you write it, Cannon Bust 1, when you do, you look at the top two cards of your deck, one of them you put to your hand, and the other one either to your soul or at the top of your deck. However, if you ride on top of a grade 3 with her, then for that turn she also gets plus 15k power and plus 1 critical, which is pretty damn good because we can ride into Amaterasu first, and then next turn we can ride into Imperial Daughter, get the card in hand, or and then to soul or top of deck, and also get ourselves a 15k and a crit, which is definitely very nice for just one Cannon Blast. Her second skill is a once per turn act on Vanguard Circle, you soul blast one when you do for that turn you give one of your units plus 6k which is really good actually for building up some numbers and i'm going to go over that later you can actually give that plus 6k to like an amaterasu and instead of hitting for 17 she can hit for 23 which you know asks for at least 15k guard from every single clan so it's definitely very good and she's a very good um boss card and she's good on both the first turn ride and also the second Finally, we have our little finisher, which is Victoria's Deer. Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, skill very important, also works on rear. Once per turn, act. Soul Blast two of your grade threes and discard a card, which means you can also discard protect markers, by the way. When you do, you look at the top seven cards of your deck, take two critical triggers, specifically critical triggers, and then all the other cards, well, usually gonna be five, you randomly shuffle and put them on the bottom of your deck and then leave the two criticals on top of your deck. And then for that turn, you can choose six of your units and they get plus 10k. So what this does is it lets you check top seven. If you get two crits, put them on top. The rest gets randomly shuffled. So those five cards get shuffled, not your whole deck gets shuffled, obviously, or like not the remaining deck gets shuffled, but just those remaining cards. So if you check seven and find no crits, then seven will be shuffled. If you find one crit, then six will be shuffled and you know, you get it. And then on top of that, it's basically a Soul Saver skill in which you get plus 10k on every single unit. But even if you look at the top 7 and you whiff and you don't get a single crit, putting by that time, because you have to have two grade 3s in the soul, which you can either do by, you know, riding once, twice, three times, or by going Amaterasu, Imperial Daughter, and then use Imperial Daughter's skill to possibly soul charge a grade 3, and then you can immediately call the Victorious Deer and use the skill. But even if you whiff it, let's say all top 7 aren't crits, 
The fact that you put those cards in the bottom means that the remaining cards in your deck are most likely crits, un unless you've already checked everything, but that's not very likely, so therefore this is a really really good card and we run 10 grade 3s in total because it's just a good number for this clan. Next up is in my opinion one of the best grade 2s in the clan currently, well for standard, which is Promised Daughter. During the battle that she attacks the vanguard, so both on vanguard and rearguard skill, if you have 4 more cards in your hand she gets plus 6k, meaning she's a 15k attacker to the vanguard, with the aforementioned imperial daughter skill she can become a 21k attacker on her own which is really nice, and then on rearguard and guardian circle this unit cannot be retired by your opponent's skills, however in brackets it does say that it can be chosen for skills so this is really good right now because you know Kyger was pretty popular and blaster blade can also retire in royals so it's quite nice that you have this sort of immunity to control and sometimes you can just call down two of her against Kyger and they just can't really do much so that makes it really really nice and now we're gonna go over the rest of the grade 2 lineup and I know it's gonna get some reactions so this is where it ends and yes this is not silent Tom and allow me to elaborate on why so Ryo Gyoza, um, uh, this player in Japan, went to the Suganeko VGCS, which had over 100 players for standard, by the way, purely standard tournament only after one set, and he went 10-0. That means he went 7-0 round-wise, but he won 10 games and lost 0 by not running Silent Tom. And when I first tested OTT, I was like, okay, Silent Tom is cool, let's put him in 4 times. But then I felt that it was just a little bit too costly for what it did, because when you call him he essentially gets a target on his head and then, you know, the opponent is gonna try to bum rush it and kill it, but the part that I don't like about Silent Tom is that it costs a counter blast every time, and so, you know, the 6k is really worth it, so you do want a counter blast, but the deck has a lot of things it wants to counter blast for. Amaterasu is counter blast, Imperial Daughter is counter blast, Sotori Hime is also counter blast, and this card is really good, so there's a lot of counter blast in the deck, you know, uh, Circle Magus we're gonna go over is also counter blast, and then the only counter charge is this, so we're gonna go over it all, and like, I felt that it was just a bit too much and it wasn't doing enough. Don't get me wrong, Silent Time is still a really good card, and I think in premium, it's by far the best thing with Ichikishima. However, in standard, I think this is a better lineup, so let's go over Sotori Hime first. So her skill is when she attacks the Vanguard, specifically just during that battle, on Rearguard Circle, you can count as one, you draw one, and then you discard one. And then for that turn she gets plus 6k, so you just, just kind of like filters the deck. However, if your vanguard is grade 3 or higher, then you can check the top card of your deck and leave it on top or bottom, which is overall very nice. So this is really good because it lets you filter through your deck, you know, try to run into your good cards essentially, like you want to get your grade 3s because you want to ride them, you might need this against the Kagero matchup, you might need these just for plusing and you know, you know, just being able to filter through your deck faster, especially Circle Magus. And so I think this is a really really good card, I played at 3, uh, potentially 4, but then you have to cut a grade 3 I think, so I think 3 is fine, and then we play 3 Memes. When you call her, you look at the top card of your deck and leave it at the top or bottom. Now, very simple effect, and at first I wasn't very impressed by her, but she does pair up really well with Amaterasu, and that's what I meant by being able to build up Amaterasu quite well during your turns and then hit for big numbers. Then, like, if you're stacking two crits on top of your deck and giving everything plus 10k, you might as well hit for even better numbers by the use of Meme and Amaterasu, because you're already gonna get at least 5k from her uh, by using either her own skill or Imperial Daughter's skill, and so by building up an extra 5k with Meme, I think it's even better. So Meme's good. If you still want to play Tom, then you take out these three Memes and play three Toms, but in my opinion, I think it, the Cannonball Blast cost is a little bit too much. Going over the, over the grade ones, we have four Circle Magus. First skill is Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. During your drive check, if you have a grade two or higher, then you can put that card on the bottom of your deck, and if you do, you draw one. Even if you have more than one of this on the field, you will only be able to do this skill once, because after the first resolution, the target isn't there anymore, so you know you don't get to draw more than one. So it's always going to be one, but it's still really good for filtering. Second skill is when you ride on top of her, count must one and draw one. Really nice, because turn one, you ride on top of Legendary Magus, you draw yourself a card. Turn two, you ride on top of Circle Magus, you draw yourself a card. And then, you know, next turn you're gonna ride into something and it's gonna draw cards. So, overall, very nice and pretty good. Also, in case you feel risky, I should have mentioned this by running two uh, Victorious Deers, I don't think it's really an issue because if it's your only grade three, worst case you ride it, you gotta protect. Like, by far, like, if you really, really don't wanna ride it, you can 
guard with it early because of the new guarding rules where you can actually drop, you know, you can guard with grades above your vanguard and then you can G assist into one of these, but that's like a big brain play, so I don't know, like, unless you really deem it worth it, that's something you can do, but I, I don't think it's really that worth it, but continuing on, our next 4 of is Firefly Magus. When you call her, it's the same effect as Meimei, you look at the top card and leave it on top or bottom. So legit the same as Meimei, really good for building up Amaterasu as I said, so I think it's quite good. Two luck bards, some people leave four, I think the 5k is a bit too much. On call, soul blast two, draw one and gets plus 6k. Um, I don't like the 5k for when you have to ride it, that's, that's the problem, it's basically like riding Laurel but in standard. Um, I think it's a really good effect, you could bump it up to three and maybe take away one of these. Um, but I think honestly two is fine. I usually run into like I only really use it once per game usually and just running into it once is enough. Then I play three Geminis. So if you have three or more damage you can put it into your soul and then counter charge one. So I think um, it has a bit of a restriction, which is why I play 3, so I think if it didn't have that restriction, I'd play 4, but right now, I know some people don't even play him, but I think, like, if Bushroad's nice enough to give OTT some counter charge, then I think it's worth playing. Then, obviously, the 4 heals, the 4 perfect shield draws, the 4 psychic bird crits, and then the 4 Nike crits. I was surprised that his name is pronounced Nike, I always thought it was Knight, but anyway, this is the deck. And then apart from that, there are some consideration units like Silent Tom, as I mentioned. And then some people, instead of Gemini, play Mizunohame. Her skill is basically when she boosts the Vanguard, if you have 3 or more damage for that battle, this unit gets plus 6k, so it's a 14k booster, which is pretty good for building up numbers. I think it's valid. If you think you can control your counter charge well enough, then be, like go ahead. But I think I don't trust myself with controlling damage that well in a clan that I'm not that familiar with, so I chose to play the Gemini instead. But this is the deck that we've gone over now, so now, as always, let's get into a game. Getting into this game is going to be a matchup between Oracle Think Tank and Nova Grappler, once again with Zistro from Yellow Card Vanguard. So as you can see, my opening hand <laughs> doesn't look all that good. I'm actually missing a grade 3 and already start with 3 triggers in hand, which isn't looking too great, especially with the 2 crits, possibly taking away from my victorious deer plays. So he does take the first turn, and I managed to ride into the circle mega, still don't write, get a grade 3. Drive check, get a heal, which goes kind of wasted, but it's still 20k shield, so it's nothing to complain about. But that being said, I still don't have a grade 3, which is a little bit problematic. Here he considers his uh, ride for the second turn, but he does go into the Iron Killer, and it doesn't seem that he's going to go for much else. He does call... However, the Burst Riser, so he's actually gonna go quite aggressive, does attack with 14 this time. I get a great 3 in the damage, which does hurt quite a bit. I was hoping for a damage trigger there, but this time I'm gonna let it go to get another great 3, which does hurt. At this point, I'm starting to fear that I'm gonna have to G-assist, actually. So I did take the second attack because it was the lower one. He does stand it by counter blasting 1 and soul blasting 1 because his Vanguard attacked. And I am gonna... I almost guarded that wrongly, that's a no pass this time. He gets his own grade 3, which is the Battle Door Fighter, and then he attacks once again, and this time I guarded with another heal trigger as well, and I draw into the heal as well. I run on top of the Circle Magus, and by its skill I get to count on one to draw one. Check the top card, it's not a grade 3, so I'm like, you know what, we're gonna keep tucking it. I attack the rear guard, drive check something, and once again, not a grade 3, I'm starting to worry a little bit here. Use the skill to finally find an Imperial Daughter, so not as bad as it could have been, but as you can see, I had to filter through the deck a lot that turn in order to actually be able to get to the Grade 3, which shows how fast OTT is actually able to go through the deck, which is why things like the uh, Amaterasu interactions with Farfai and Meme are actually possible, because you go through the deck that fast, you can actually do that combo compared to other decks in Standard. So, he's gonna activate the Battle Dwarf Fighter skill to give it to the Burst Riser, because that card will be restanding, making it quite difficult for me. And he does call the Boomerang Thrower when he's on no damage and one soul, meaning they can do both effects, which is really nice. So getting him an extra soul and an extra damage face up. So now he's working out his attack patterns and, you know, just going over things. He's going to attack with the Burst Riser first. And I tried to intercept it, but then I'm like, wait, you gave the skill from the... Uh, grade 3 to there, so that means I have to guard with two units to protect it, so I let it pass, then he attacks the Iron Killer on my rear, I let it pass, because to me, you know, 
my hand isn't exactly healthy, so I'm a little bit worried in this case, but he says he's attacking the Vanguard instead, um, so then I let it pass. I finally get the damage trigger after three checks. You know, that's what I've been mostly waiting for, because against Nova it's really important to bank on the damage triggers, because it gets really scary when they start checking fronts, as he just did. So I do guard that for two to pass. He puts the power on his Burst Riser, I believe, and then he attacks with a 19 from the Boomerang Thrower, and I guard it with just a 15k. Actually, 5k would have been enough, but then I could have just intercepted that, actually, but then he attacks my rear anyway for the last attack, so it doesn't actually make that much of a difference, and actually ended up being good. Then I top deck the Amaterasu, which is perfect because I did want to ride her first. I check, I draw my last heal, which is not the best thing. I get the Protect Marker, and I also use their skill to put the top card on the bottom of the deck, actually. I attack with 17 because I did check the deck once. I get myself a draw, which is really nice, gets me another Amaterasu and the crit, so now there's gonna be a 28k Farfire, but I don't want to be giving him damage, so I, even though I put the crit on the rear guard, I did attack the Iron Killer because I don't want to be giving him damage because then he's going to be able to do his counter blast plays. Now he has to draw into the boomerang thrower to actually do anything, so I thought that that was for the best because his hand is also not that healthy. He has like four cards in hand, and so you know I felt like. And also, I know that one of them is a front trigger, so I was like, you know, he can't really call down that much, and if he does, he's gonna have to sacrifice, you know, big shield power as well. And the fact that I have Imperial in hand means that next turn, I can attack him and put him to 4, but he risks the fact that if I check a crit, he goes to 5, if I check double crit, he goes to 6. So, it's quite scary, but he just calls down, um another grade one riser that can build up some power so he's actually you know not attacking for that much this is a one this is two to pass i believe but he gets the front so definitely the best case scenario for him so he's attacking on the van i let it pass i get a draw so yet another defensive trigger give the power to my vanguard and now he attacks with the last attack on my vanguard as well and i just guarded with a 15k and that's enough now i draw into the deer which is also really good so i ride into the imperial daughter I get to counter mass one and look at the top two cards and put one of them to my hand and the other one on top of the deck or into the soul. And I also almost forgot to take the protect marker into my hand, which I will do in a moment. Now, so one thing when I playtest ODT, actually the one thing that happens the most all the time is that I forget to take the protect marker. So I apologize for that. It's a bit of a delayed reaction, but I do take it eventually. And so right now I'm just working on my field. I use Imperial Daughter skill first to give my Amaterasu plus 6k before I forget to even take the protect marker. I think I take it after the attack, actually. Luckily, it doesn't make a difference when I take it, as long as it's not during my opponent's turn, I guess, um, or during his battle. So I do get the crit, as I said, putting him to 5. And I'm going to be attacking with the Amaterasu. I looked at the deck once, um, but not while she was there, and I do take the Protect Marker there, at, finally. So I think this is a 30k attack, because... Oh no, I think I did... No, no, I didn't look at the deck at all. So uh, he just guards it, and so without much of an issue, and he did get the defensive trigger. Two of them, actually, so it was 5k guard was actually enough. So now he has three Kanamas to work with. I think if he would have gone for the Perfect Riser there, that would have been really scary, but luckily he didn't draw into it, but he did go into another Beldor Fighter to get himself another Axel, where he called the Front Trigger there, actually. So now he's going to be using Beldor Fighter's skill quickly before he goes into the battle phase to Kanamas 1 and Soul Dust 1 and give it to the Burst Riser and then attack my rear. I let that slide because, honestly, like, Amaterasu's good, but... I can't drop that much shield from hand right now, and so I decide to uh, let that one slide. I do guard the Vanguard with a 2 to pass from the heal, because he does attack for 17 and I put myself at 32, so he would have needed 2 triggers to pass that. Then I guard this next attack with, um, well, I double guard it, and then uh, he's attacking with this one. Or no, that was one guard for the front trigger that was attacking from the Axel Circle, that was my bad. And then so now he's attacking with that rear, I drop a 15k to guard it, and now this is a 19 if I'm not mistaken, but I do have to guard with two cards because of Battledor Fighter's skill. And then this one I once again protect, leaving me with one card in hand, so that's why I let that Amat Amaterasu pass. And as you can see I top deck the Imperial Daughter, which really helps right now because I'm able to get myself another unit into my hand, and I do have the Deer as you can see, and obviously I leave the crit on the top of the deck because I can use Deer to, you know, be certain that the crit is there. So I Soul Blast my two great threes, and I do take the Protect, and the Protect gets discarded um, because of the Deer's effect. So I did Soul Blast the two, and then discard the Protect marker to essentially, um, to essentially pay the cost of the Deer. So I shuffled the remaining cards, sadly only getting one crit from the Deer. That's something, that's a trend I've noticed, um, is that 
like often in my first games when I played as an OTT, I used to get two crits all the time. But then now lately, it's always been like one. But I haven't been doomed to the point that I only get uh, that I don't get any crits. So at least I get one. So it's quite nice. And so I'm attacking for uh, 2735 if I'm not mistaken, and he guards it for a two to pass, I believe. So in this sense, you know, I need to either get the two crits or put the crit on my deer. And he has one card in hand, and I know that it's a great three, so no problem with putting it to the deer, and that's gonna be fine. So he gets the first check, second check, no heals, and that's the end of that game. So that is actually going to be it for this Oracle Think Tank deck preview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Overall, it's not really the clan that I'm enjoying the most from VBT01. I think Novas are the first, and Royals were fun briefly, but I'm already sort of like, I feel like I've played enough of them. Um, Kagura I'm currently testing, you know, for the last deck preview, but OTT, it's by far the most, the one that you can plan the most in and you can do the most uh, efficient combos in because you go through the deck so fast, but somehow it's just not really my style, but I still enjoy testing the deck for you guys in order to show what the deck looks like. I hope me not including Tom isn't too controversial, like I said, it's really easy to put him in if you want to, but there are reasons because not just Yo Gyoza went 10-0 without Tom, but the second place of the same VGCS that went 9-1 also actually didn't play Tom, so I think it's quite justified, and from my testing I felt that it was justified as well so but i do want to hear your opinions on the topic because i think it is quite important a lot of people do disagree on it or you know, agree you know in either case but it would be interesting to hear about your opinions as well so on that note that's gonna be it for me today don't forget to check out the social medias in the description as well as hit the bell button to receive all notifications because youtube's not been very friendly as of late and don't forget to join the discord channel if you haven't already but on that note that's gonna be it for me today i'll see you guys next time Bye bye